Up today, we're going to speak with Kevin Moffitt, president of Office Depot and Office Max. Kevin has over 20 years of experience in omni-channel and e-commerce business management. Kevin, so great to see you today. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So I noticed, and we spoke about this prior to uh, us recording today, that you have a fancy podcast recording studio there at the offices of Office Depot and Office Max. And just curious to know, what was the impetus behind that? Yeah, I mean, uh, calling it a fancy recording studio is definitely an over exaggeration. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're, you know, we we know that our customers, um, and especially potential customers, not current customers, but folks out there who could leverage us um, and ways we could help them, they may not even know uh, all of those capabilities. And so, you know, I think it's really important that we meet those customers where they are today. And clearly, customers. Uh, consumption patterns of content have changed dramatically over the last few years. For sure. Um, podcasting is is a big deal now. You know, people, in, uh, they may be driving to the office less, but they're still driving. And, um, you know, having on-demand access to content that it provides value to them, not just as entertaining, but actually helps them uh, achieve their goals, I think is really important. So we started a podcast series that we call Imagine Success, uh, a couple months ago, and I've had the opportunity to interview small business owners and experts in the areas of entrepreneurship and marketing. And it's just been an amazing experience to um, directly connect and and shine a spotlight on these stories that, um, you know, I, I think they're really exciting. They're very inspirational to hear about, you know, what are these moments where an individual decides, I'm going to take my dream and I'm going to go for it, right? I'm going to try yeah. to bring that dream to life. And, um, you know, the fact that we can play a, a small role um, in that story, I think, is very exciting. For sure. I mean, I think it's cool you're doing it yourself, Kevin, because I can tell you, you know, I'm CEO of a software company, and I'm obviously always focused on the business. But then this podcast has really allowed me to create relationships, dig deeper into our customers and potential customers in terms of what they're thinking and feeling and really kind of puts my finger on the pulse of, of our business. And I imagine it does the same for you. Well, that's a, you just you just define the the magic of it because let's be yeah. honest, I don't have the same opportunities to interact directly with our customers than our store associates do, right? They meet with our customers every single day. Um, you know, I am in a lot of meetings, and so uh, I do get into the stores as often as I possibly can. I do talk to our customers in in our aisles and at our point of sale, but. There's nothing that can replace the opportunity to really dive deep and to take 30 minutes or 40 minutes, really getting an understanding of the needs of that customer, the challenges they face. And so it has been incredibly helpful in that way. It, it's an in-depth focus group study of one um, that we do every single episode, which is incredibly valuable. For sure. And who is your customer and how has that customer changed over time? Yeah, so you know, we define our, our customers uh, into three core segments. The the first and and let's the core, the foundation of the business are our small business customers. You know, there's over thirty million businesses in the United States, and and the very large majority of those businesses are less than uh, ten uh, employees. Um, those businesses are our bread and butter, right? The person for person or account for account. Um, they'll spend twice as much as, as our, as our non-business customers and make up a good chunk of our file. Um, but outside of that, we have what we call our education customer groups, which includes uh, teachers and uh, school administrators and PTA presidents, right? Um, and also parents and students um, who are purchasing directly for uh, their sure. households. Um, major part of our business, obviously, it peaks out uh, around the back to school time period towards the end of the summer um, as as schools come back online. But we have you know a steady flow of business throughout the year, and it's an area that we're really excited um, to uh, continue to grow. We have really strong penetration uh, in total teachers across the the country, and they see us as a as a resource to help them do their jobs, which I think we could all agree is one of the most important jobs. Uh, in the country. Yeah. Um, and then the third group uh, are our personal shoppers, and we, we call them home office. Um, and, right. you know, as we think about it, it's tremendous opportunity to talk about change over the last few years, right? Just how many, in fact, it looks like you are working in a home office right now, That's right? right? I mean, we, have, yeah. uh, we have a lot of, we're, we're learning more about people's personalities just by seeing the backgrounds that they mm -hmm. have uh, in their home office. And it used uh, to be Zoom very calls, right? everybody had the weird, like, Zoom backgrounds, and then I think right. the Zoom backgrounds have kind of 
gone away. Yeah, they were to really some degree. Poor they... on March of 2020, and now people are kind of over it. And let's be honest, the tech never really worked all that well. So it'd chop off your ear or chop yeah, off half your true. nose and <laughs> just yeah, it never looked true. quite right, right? So no you're true. starting to get a little bit more of a sense of, of who people are. And I think that that's really interesting, um, you know, how your workspace and your home life, people always talk about the balance of work and, and um, you know, your personal life. And clearly those two things have blended um, together more yeah. seamlessly than they have ever been before, right? And you're just talking about shifts in, in even our sense of privacy and transparency have occurred over the last few years. And I just find that incredibly fascinating. So obviously empowering um, home office workers through the convenience of uh, office products and technology. And certainly we, you know, we have one of the broadest assortments of, of home office furniture and desks and seating um, and accessories. So just creating a workspace that will allow you to be productive um, and efficient at home as well as in the office. So um, and, all three yeah. groups are major opportunities for us right now. Um, and it's just exciting to just see how work has evolved over the last three years and how we can challenge ourselves to evolve with those trends. And what are you guys seeing in terms of the return to office? Are you seeing it kind of level off and kind of like a, a new normal, so to speak. Um, do you think that we are going to continue to shift back to where things were pre pandemic, just based upon, I'm sure you're seeing lots of data across those customer segments, especially the, the last one, the, the, you know, the, the work from home person that would give you kind of unique insight into that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in education, obviously most children have gone back to the classroom, but in higher education, we've seen a very large expansion into hybrid and remote classroom environments and seeing that sustained past the pandemic, right, where many more people are opting for remote learning at the college and even graduate level. Um, and that's that seems to be a trend that will continue into the future. When you talk about um, corporate offices, the external data that we see is that um, you know, there was an increase back to about 50% of pre-pandemic normal occupancy. Um, but then it's it's leveled off fairly yeah. fairly stable now at about that fifty percent range, and so just think about how dramatic of a difference that is if that continues to be the case over the next several years. Um, it it represents a new permanence, right? That there is going to be a much larger group of of professionals who who have needs that are very different from when right. you could just go in the supply closet or call your IT tech. Um, person to come help you with your laptop. I mean, we are now all our own supplies experts. We're our own technology experts. I, we I have to deal with right. Wi-Fi yeah. problems, right? Um, and so, you know, our 24-7 tech support program is just something that is an invaluable tool uh, for many of our customers who now have to be their own tech support, which is not something that many people anticipate, not only for yourself, but for your children, maybe even for your own parents. Um, you know, really, it, it's it's a different environment than it was several years ago. So how does that change the way that, you know, you talked about the podcast, I'm sure there's other things you're doing as well, in terms of the way yeah. you're looking at building your brands? Because obviously, the word office it, in people's minds mm -hmm connotates a different meaning now than it used to, right? And that's in, that's within the name of your brand. So how's that exactly the way you your your future kind of brand pillars? You know, I just I just think of us as we are proponents of success. You know, we are call it if you would like the success store. Um, I, I think that's limiting, so I don't use that um, as as our definition. But our our brand platform of imagine success is obviously very deliberate. Both words. Um, both success and imagine, right, that we want to support the process of you envisioning what success looks like for you as an individual, which could look very, very different. And I do think that there's been a diversification of definitions of success over the last few years, too. It doesn't sure. just mean climbing the corporate ladder, right, and achieving uh, promotion next year or even even making more money every year. It really is more about self-satisfaction and wellness and, and you know, connections, social connections, whether it's with family or friends and experiences. And so really trying to bring all that together so that we can be a proponent of success in all of its multiple forms. Um, but certainly, you know, efficiency and organization and productivity and, um, you know, just alignment, being able to even 
a chart down. What does that look like for me? What are my goals um, as diverse as they might be from the person sitting next to me? And how can I help bring those to life? So we're looking at different media patterns. We're, we're in, certainly challenging ourselves um, to rethink how we connect with new customers and the messaging that um, we're putting out in market. One of the most important challenges for us is that we already today do so many things that people may not um, recognize externally, right? One great example, we have the fastest in-store pickup program in the world. 20 minutes guaranteed. If you don't get an email from me 20 minutes after you place the order that it's ready to pick up, we automatically send you a $20 coupon. Um, and we don't send out a lot of those coupons because our operations are incredibly focused on the omnichannel customer and making sure that convenience factor of if you need it, you need it now, and we can get it to you faster than anybody else can. Um, that really matters when you're in a remote or uh, hybrid work environment. You, If you run out of ink, you need ink now, right? Yeah, you don't need ink in, in three days. days. <laughs> I'm the way around, you right? Exactly. You get what you need and get back to work. That's right. So just being able to tell the world, not everyone knows that. I mean, if you come to our website, you'll see it. But how do we get that message out to people who aren't our current customers um, that we have these convenient capabilities? Another great example, every one of our stores is an extensive, fully featured copy and print center. And so again, if you're a remote worker and you're used to being able to print anything you wanted at your office, you don't have that capability anymore. Um, how can we, we support you in transitioning those needs so that wherever you are, if you're at home, you're at an airport, uh, you know, you're traveling, you're at, a, you're at a co-working location, that we can help provide those services that you might have typically gotten um, from a corporate building. Um, and then just the range of, of products and services that we offer as well. I mean, we, we have a tremendous assortment of products and services to support multiple forms of uh, professional and educational um, um, challenges. So how do we get the word out there that we provide things that, just like I said, the broadest assortment of office chairs that you can come and try yourself. And believe me, it is kind of important if you're going to be sitting in a chair uh, for 10 hours at home that it is comfortable and also is not uh, destroying your, your spine while, while you're sitting there, right? So being able to come in and actually try those products um, we've all had bad online experiences at this point, right? And then trying yeah. to figure out how to return those products is often not the easiest process either. Um, and so really focusing in on, on the assortment and the capabilities that we have and trying to get that message out there wherever our customers are, whether that's using streaming services, whether that's using YouTube, you know, whether it's listening to podcasts or, you know, however they're consuming media today, which is very different. I mean, short form video uh, really wasn't even a thing all that long ago. Right. And now mm -hmm. people are spending massive portions of their lives Naturally, scrolling you know, through the, the short form video. In. Your future customer is exactly. you know, Gen Z who grew up with the phone as an appendage to their body doesn't have, you know, t a TV in front of them all the time. They're staring at their phone that impacts the way you're going to be building your brand in the next five to 10 years. Well, the, the good news there is that I, um, I have a direct connection to that generation coming up because I have four children. And um, they <laughs> believe me, they, they definitely are my focus groups many, many times. I leverage their, their knowledge. And they're a pretty diverse range from 11 to 21. So they are truly our future customers. And so staying connected with them and just observing what they're doing um, is incredibly helpful as well. Yeah, I mean, I was saying on a different interview I did recently that my daughter went to college freshman year, and the thing I noticed is that no one else in their dorm had a TV. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, looking at your background, we were both in Boston in college in the late 90s, and I remember every dorm room had a TV back then. And it's of just, course. The, the world changed so much. One thing I found is just you have this sort of, like, chasm of people that are in the C-suite of, of, especially in the marketing side at these big organizations that are Gen Xers that did not grow up with the internet in the household and they build their brand accordingly, even now the world is changing beneath their feet. And then you have these new companies that start up with people who natively just understand that they're talking to a new type of consumer. And I think it creates a huge disruption opportunity. And it I'm absolutely curious, does. Yeah. But, but trying to find the balance is really important as well. As you can imagine, we have a very large core of customers who are Gen X and baby boomers. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and even, even a significant portion of our customer file who are retirees. 
And right. you know, you 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 probably people probably have a a vision of what that is, but our retirees often look almost identical to a small business owner because of the activities that they're pursuing, the different organizations they might be volunteering for, maybe managing just their own household, their own expenses. Um, yeah. You know, they operate like a small business. Um, and so, you know, it's very interesting. You can't go all the way over on the spectrum and be 100% TikTok all the time and then lose your connection to your core bread and butter customers. So for us, it's a constant challenge to thread the needle and make sure that we are doing things to bring in new customers, but at the same time, keeping those connections very strong um, with customers who've been shopping with us for decades, um, which is a relatively unique challenge, right? I mean, frankly, I think everyone has to think about that. But for us, having such an established base within the business community, which historically have trended a lot older, and now we're seeing, though, that the, the younger generation are becoming entrepreneurs. It, it may not mean that it's their full-time job, right? They may have uh, a business that they run as a side hustle or maybe even multiple um, businesses that they're running as a side hustle. Heck, even being an influencer, right, and having a revenue yeah. stream coming in from being an influencer, that may be a part-time job that supplements their income. But it's a very interesting and, and certainly uh, changing um, professional backdrop that that we're working in right now. But to me, that makes it exciting um, because true. we know what we need to do tomorrow certainly will look very different than what we did 10 years ago. Absolutely. So let's shift gears a little bit to you because I was looking at your, your background and I see that, you know, you spent seven years in really the inf infant stages of the internet from 1997 right. to 2004. You know, I see that you're a web designer and developer in 97, 98. There were not That's that right. many people doing web design and web development at that point. Um, it right. was really the true early adopters. So just like, I know it's a little bit off a tangent, but I'm always fascinated by like, tell us what, what are some of the memories you have in working as a, as a web designer and web developer when the web was just getting started? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I built my first website um, while I was in grad school at Northeastern in, in downtown yeah. Boston. And um, the, it was really interesting. The school was, um, it, it was their 100th anniversary. And so they had all this incredible archival materials that probably no one had seen, <laughs> maybe ever, certainly maybe in decades for sure. And so yeah. I had this idea. I, I wanted to create an, an exhibit, a museum exhibit, but there wasn't, uh, there wasn't any funding to create the physical space and all that. And so I, I had this thought of, well, could we create a virtual museum? Could we use this new technology, this new internet technology to highlight these artifacts and to allow people to, to you know, view them? And the more I thought about it, I said, well, could we create almost like a sense of space, like use Photoshop to create what a room would look like and let someone click on the item and then it would pull up some information? I truly believe this is one of the first virtual museums ever created in the world. <laughs> it was in 1995. You know, Amazon had just launched the year before. Um, and so that, that was really the beginning of just doing something new. Um, I was studying history and museum exhibit design and documentary filmmaking at the time. And this new technology, it just kind of, it was so fascinating from the beginning because of the two-way um, opportunity, right? That this wasn't just telling your story and having someone absorb it. This was an interactive medium that you could get information out, but then people could respond to it and interact with it in new and different ways. And so that was the beginning. And really, if you took that basic idea, um, that's essentially what my entire career um, up until the last several years has been around is optimizing the capabilities that are represented in that interactive medium to allow people to, you know, find information that they need, purchase products that they need, interact with people, give, provide feedback, um, all of those things across multiple industries, whether I was working in financial services or in nonprofit and now for quite a long time in the retail industry as well. Um, but it's all centered around that idea that, you know, how do we use this tool to empower interactions? Absolutely. And um, I think it's just been amazing. Frankly, I tell people all the time, if you think you know what you're going to be doing uh, 30 years ago th from now, if you're in college and you're an undergrad, oh um, you know, literally when I was an undergrad, my job did not exist 
um, the, the job that I was going to build my entire career around. My job did not exist when I was a freshman in college. So it just shows how quickly things move. And I do think that that will be true for this generation as well. When you think about artificial intelligence and biotech, there's just going to be so many opportunities um, for people to do things that literally don't exist right now. Well, and not only that, Kevin, but the rate of change with some of these technologies is faster than ever before. I mean, AI, literally every 30 days, I do a lot of public speaking on AI, and I always have to make my deck like 48 hours before I go on stage, because otherwise it'll be dated. Uh, because exactly. what I can do, and you know, so and I, you talk about young people and not knowing what their future is going to hold, the, this technology is going to create entirely new industries, entirely new opportunities that people have not even dreamt of. Um, the same way the internet itself did, I would argue even more powerfully. So curious to hear what your thoughts are on AI, just given you obviously have a keen interest in, in the technology space. Uh, where do you see this all going? And if there, are there any particular areas of AI that you have your eye on? Yeah, so uh, uh, there are you know some really obvious use cases in um, in retail. One is around customer service, you know, and just being yeah. able to provide really great experiences to customers and automate a lot of those interactions. Frankly, the non value added interactions of where's my stuff, you know, the, all of that can now essentially be offloaded to artificial intelligence, and then you can leverage your human to human interactions for much higher level, much more value added. Um, transactions. Um, but another really important piece is people have been talking about personalization for decades now, right? I've done presentations. I could pull up PowerPoint decks on, on internet personalization that would be yeah. 20 years old at this point. But I don't think we've truly harnessed the power of one-to-one -one communications that we will over the next several years when artificial intelligence really comes into play. And we can take all of the data that's housed in our own first-person customer databases, which is incredible if you look at different retailers and organizations, how much historical information we have that we could leverage to truly create experiences that are designed for that individual. And what I'm really excited about is how we can use that information to empower our in-store associates as well. One of the things that makes us relatively unique is that when you come into our store, you can actually talk to somebody. It's really a nice thing, um, but it's something that is very rare. We're one of the few retailers left, large retailers, um, that you can actually go into our store and have a conversation with our associate, and they're happy to, to, to be part of that. It happens every time. If you walk into our store, you'll hear people talking. You go into a mass merchant, you're not going to be approached by someone. You're not going to have an interaction. You're not going to be talking about your business um, or your classroom, right? You're just not. You're not going to be talking about problems and challenges that you're trying to uh, overcome. Um, but that happens on a daily basis in our store. So how can we use the power of artificial intelligence to and bring that to bear for our associate in the store when they're in aisle, when they're interacting with the customer face to face? All of our associates already are empowered with mobile devices um, that are connected to the Internet and to all of our core systems. And so leveraging that as a connection point so that we can tap into the power of historical information for the customer that we're talking to, bring to bear product recommendations, or even answer questions as simple as, I'm not sure which ink I need to buy for my printer. Well, we can right. help you find that out pretty easily, right? Um, and so those kind of things, and not only that, but just taking it to the next level, what chair really makes the most sense for you? What, what features or capabilities are you looking for? And how can we connect all of those dots for the associate, for the customer, both online, but also when they're in our in-store environment? Yeah, for sure. It's interesting, like, you know, we're, we're having this conversation in early November and OpenAI just announced that you can create your own GPTs now, like your own yeah. chatbots, and you can put in your own data sources. And one of the idea I had is like, what if I upload it, speaking of business, like every, um, you know, tax return I've ever had, every past financial record, everything I've ever done, putting privacy concerns aside, and then I just knew whatever my history was as a person. You could even put all your personal spending data. And then you'd have this bot where if you want to know anything about your past financially or otherwise, you just asked it and would have all the memory that would be contained of your life. And that would be a very dangerous that. idea, though. You'd say, like, how much have I spent at my favorite oh, restaurant over yeah, the exactly. last year? And that number right. is going to blow your mind. Right. <laughs> 
How much exactly. have I spent at Starbucks on lattes uh, in the last year? Right? Yeah, but the or, flip side is like, am, where am I saving? Where where can I save? And you start exactly. to think about ways, or and then you put it in the business um, context, where if you're a small business owner, and you're like, you know, where can I cut 15% of my costs this year? Or where can I find efficiencies? And if it have all the data, it could help you. And I well, think that and, and the, I, the, I like where you're going and even thinking about it more proactively, right? And really just uh, you start your day and your companion, your virtual companion yeah. just says, hey, these are things you need to focus on today, right? <laughs> By yeah. the time you get to the end of the day, you need to check off these five things. They're either exactly. due or they're really important. You have it. This person uh, wrote you an email. We know that you always rep reply to that person, but you haven't in three days. You know, those kind of things, I think, are really, really interesting. And then when you apply it at scale to the size of our customer file and the size of our associate community, you know, there's tremendous power to be unlocked there over time. I love what yeah, you're saying like about, um, you know, the PowerPoint world. slide and having to re recreate it. It's almost like in Disney World where, you know, they create Tomorrowland, uh, but then Tomorrowland is no longer Tomorrowland in a few years. That's right. now happening instead of five-year or ten-year chunks, to your point. It's happening in monthly chunks. And uh, I'm really interested in how... That whole process, all of the advances that we can make, not just through a, a pane of glass, um, through the internet, but also what can that mean for physical environments? You know, what can that mean for the store? Um, and how can we connect the dots to make the store uh, a better experience um, for our customers leveraging technology? Yeah, and I, I think what's interesting in, in some of the things you've been saying is it's a barbell, right? Like on one hand, consumers want they want humanity. They want to be able to touch and feel other people and, and, and get help and actually talk to someone on one end, which is very hard to scale, but incredibly important. And on the other hand, they want things that are fast, that are efficient, that are personalized, highly digitized, et cetera. And if you have both, then I think you could truly deliver. But I think if you go too far one direction or the other, then you really find yourself at risk from being disconnected. Well, that's it. And I think there is, um, what, I, what I've seen, and even with my own children, who Clearly, you know, they don't remember a time without the internet, without an iPad, without yeah. an iPhone, right? All the connectivity. They still have a tremendous desire to have face-to-face -face experiences and interactions. And I think as we become more digitally connected, it, be, it brings out some of those instinctual, you know, billion-year-old <laughs> genetic impulses to say... I don't want to just spend my entire life staring at a screen, right? There's got to be something right. more out there. And so how can these technology be, technologies be complementary as well to some of the physical interactions that, that we have? And, and I do think this is where social connections and even communities of like-minded professionals or educators, you know, coming together um, face to face, uh, I think is, is a, will continue to be really important. I mean, you've also seen businesses that are, that are growing around coming together, painting a picture and having a glass of wine together, right? I mean, there are these, these physical interactions that I think are really important as well. So seeing that dual trend of everything becoming more connected and artificial intelligence, increasing the efficiency of all of those interactions while also supporting more, you know, real face-to-face -face physical um, experiences, I think is, is really interesting to see how those two, uh, you could say opposite impulses, but how they remain connected together over, over the next several years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, to wrap, this has been a great conversation and kind of to wrap things up, um, here, I'd love to just hear from you. If you look back on your career, you've obviously, um, have had a pretty, um, great, and fun career. And you, you certainly seem to me as somebody who's still passionate about what they're doing, which I think is key, um, you know, in terms of continued success, what would you look back at and point to in terms of things that you feel that you've done right, um, throughout your career that maybe we can impart on some of our younger listeners here at speed of culture? Well, I mean, uh, the, the one thing that I continue to focus on is always be curious, right? And curiosity seems to be the common denominator of the people that I work with who are, not not even successful in in historic terms, but just the people I like hanging out with, right? Yeah. They're the people that I'm going to draw energy from, and they're the people who are going to inspire me, and and uh, you know are going to share new ideas. It's the curiosity that 
you know, it always draws us to what are, what could we be doing differently? How could we, what's around the corner? What can I learn? How can I become better at my craft, whatever that craft is, um, over the next six months or over the next year, you know, really challenging yourself and also the diversity. Um, you know, I'm a big geek. I'm into so many different things, right? And I think not just getting so deep into your, into what you do, but continuing to read and learn about other areas, um, you know, you never know where the next inspiration is going to come yeah, from. And it could be things from something too. very different. And I think it's, you know, Steve Jobs said something around, you know, the definition of genius is the ability to connect the dots, right? Or something, something to that effect. And, and I love that idea of just being able to draw from such diverse sources. So just be broad so because you don't know what the opportunity is. We talked about, you don't even know what your job title may be. It may not exist yet. Um, but can you get yourself prepared for whatever that opportunity is, right? By staying as diverse and continuing to learn new things all the time. Absolutely. Awesome. And, and finally, is there a mantra or saying that you like to live by in your career? Well, uh, Moffat is actually a Scottish clan. It's a, it's a border clan right on, right in the South part of, of Scotland. And okay. uh, the family motto is Sparrow Meliora. It's Latin for, we aspire to greater things. Uh, and I, I really like that. I, we aspire to continue to improve, you know, always thinking about the, what's around the corner. Um, so Sparrow Meliora, a little Latin for you for the day. How about that? I love that. Well, th- I love that. Sparrow Meliora won't forget that. And uh, <laughs> won't forget this interview either. So thanks again for joining, Kevin. It's been uh, awesome getting to know you. And I wish you nothing but success moving forward, heading into 2024. Perfect. Nice talking with you as well. Likewise. On behalf of Susie and Adweek Keen, thanks again to Kevin Moffitt, president of Office Depot and Office Max for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the Speed of Culture podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Till next time, see you soon, everyone. Take care. The Speed of Culture is brought to you by Susie as part of the Adweek Podcast Network and AGAS Creator Network. You can listen and subscribe to all Adweek's podcasts by visiting adweek.com slash podcasts. To find out more about Suzy, head to suzy.com. And make sure to search for The Speed of Culture in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Click follow so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Suzy, thanks for listening.